And I swear to God, I coined Feel the Burn. Bernie is most definitely focused on economic issues. He's always done what he says. He marches on picket lines and stands up for workers. He's one of the few people who seems to actively care about aiding our mentally ill people. He sees the intersectionality of issues of racism and gender as sort of sideline issues. Um, and that is a problem to me. Burlington, Vermont. This small city of about 43,000 is the birthplace of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, the jam band Fish, and the adopted hometown of a fiery populist who served as mayor for eight years and happens to be one of the nation's leading Democratic candidates for president, Bernie Sanders. The people here in Vermont would say about Bernie is that he's been saying the same song, but he's been consistent with what his beliefs are for a long time about multinational corporations and, and all the rest. But the, the message that we've heard from Bernie for decades, his, uh, he's now you know, staying on the national stage and, and it's, uh, it seems to have caught fire. He is uh, obviously one of the top two or three contenders for the, in the race for president right now on the Democratic side. Burlington sits on the eastern shore of Lake Champlain, just south of the Canadian border, far closer to Montreal than to any big city in the United States. Its low-rise blocks of old brick storefronts and clapboard homes can be walked end to end in an hour. Burlington is, um, it's an open place. Here, there aren't six degrees of separation. There's really one or two. Once you start talking to someone, you'll understand how much you have in common. I love Burlington so much because we have um, somewhat of a city with the outdoors uh, very accessible, very close by. Burlington has always been a very liberal city. People are pretty politically active. People are very opinionated, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The Republican Party is a very distinct minority. The, the third party, it's uh, Demo Democrats and progressives have very distinct parties in Burlington, though. The population here is about 83% white, and about 17% of people here live below the poverty line. In Vermont, your currency is doing good. It's not how much money you make, it's not how big your house is, it's like, what are you doing for the world? It's a pretty laid back place with growing diversity and it's a place where immigrants and working people continue to live. And Bernie lived in this community and uh, the way that you get elected here is you knock on people's doors. In 2009, Sanders moved from the working class South End near downtown to a four bedroom vinyl sided colonial in a more detached suburban part of the city called the New North End. After World War II, there was a huge need for housing for the returning GIs. And they took this neighborhood, which was barely built. So what they ended up doing was they threw up a bunch of smaller houses that, that GIs could afford, and it just kept going down what we call in Burlington the Avenue. It's a neighborhood carved from the forest in the 1950s for ranch homes, cul-de-sacs, and big backyards. So that's Bernie's house right there. People in Vermont are very protective of Bernie. Um, it's certainly okay to go drive by, but we're, we're pretty cool about not being weird. like. We don't stalk our politicians. We're, we're not that type. It's not like tons of people show up at Bernie's house and snap selfies in front of it. <laughs> we don't care, frankly. I mean, most people in Vermont really love what Bernie's done and doing, but it's just not part of our culture to be that way. And Sanders is still seen all over town. It's highly likely, and I have, and I know a lot of people have, we bump into Bernie, we bump into Patrick Leahy, and we also bump into Peter Welch, our three representatives uh, down in D.C. I think I saw him walking on Church Street one time, where I was with a group of people, and he just walked by. That was Bernie. He, he doesn't want to be a, a center of attention. You can bump into him on Church Street or on the bike lane or or whatever, and he'll he'll stop and chat with you and you know tell him he's doing a good job or tell him he's not. His demeanor is kind of... Um, it's not like, hi, you know, how, you know, it's just kind of like, hi, you know, <laughs> sort of, he's, he's, he's unpolished. And I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about him. I first met him up there in the church for the Martin Luther King, um, for the Martin Luther King um, 
celebration. Sanders self-identifies as a democratic socialist and prides himself in advancing the most far-reaching and aggressive plans in several major policy areas. Climate is one of them. Uh, I am prepared to stand with the working class of this country and take on the greed and corruption of the corporate elite. People are telling me that, Bernie, the plan you just released to combat climate change is expensive. And you know what? They are right. It is expensive. But the cost of doing nothing is far more expensive. There are a lot of young people that are completely freaked out about climate change. He's obviously not a climate change denier. That's something that's extremely important to me. Climate change program is, again, the most comprehensive and the one that so meets both the climate and the class issue. Sanders promises that climate change will be factored into virtually every area of his policy, from immigration to health care to housing and beyond. What got me involved in doing the kind of work that I do is definitely housing and issues around housing. Vermonters have an affordability crisis. I think that we're in danger of making living in this country um, unaffordable. Housing in Burlington is really expensive. Landlords have a lot of power. And Bernie, he's got a very comprehensive, the most comprehensive housing program right now. No other presidential contenders have such long symbiotic relationships with the cities where they live. Burlington shaped Sanders as Sanders shaped Burlington, so much so that it's hard to consider one without the other. He is our best hope. He's like our only hope. He's got a gift for grassroots organizing. and. When people believe in him, they'll do just about anything to get him elected. That, to me, is what a president should be. There is a genuine chance that he might become the next president. To that, I say, that is a good thing.